And welcome back. Today we are flying another plane I actually like. It's the Typhoon Mark 1B. And it's the 4.3 version, the non-premium version. And no, your screen didn't just freeze. My game has been playing like absolute ass. Frame drops have been very common, unlucky, but you know, it is what it is. If you see it freeze for half a second here and there, don't worry, it's not actually you. So, what's the Typhoon like? It's fast, it turns well, it has extremely good style control. So versus basically everyone, you can turn or run. And now you might wonder, what is this thing bad at? And it's mostly the high speed control. As well as the climb rate is not bad per se, but it's nothing special. It's very mediocre, but it's still one of the better 4.3 planes. And it's nice because every nation has one of those 4.3 planes that's just extremely potent. The BF-19F4, the Pure Mursky, the XP-50, the J2M2 to name a few. And there's plenty more. Basically every nation has something, even the French. I know, right? It's quite a shock to me as well. But it's extremely nice to have a plane that can do something very well at that 4.0 to 4.7 bracket. Because it's just cluttered with the powerhouse planes. And you want something potent. If you are flying something that's kind of bad at around 4.0, you are just throwing. You are going to get your ass kicked. And, well, if it's your kink, I'm not going to shame you. But I'm not necessarily a big fan of it. So let's get started. I'm flying away from an F4U and the F4U is not something I'm necessarily that scared of, but it depends on the variant. I come in and I kind of notice this camo, that's an F1C. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that and I don't mean the F1C, I mean the F4U1C. There's not a supersonic jet in here, but even then I'd probably rather still be flying the Typhoon in that case. F4U1C. One of the worst performance planes at this BR, it has amazing guns however. But that's the only thing it has going for it. It's still an F for you. It's still decent. But if you're going to start dogfighting this thing, you are going to have an absolute horrible time. So right now we are just using his energy against him. I'm just trying to keep him slow. I almost get a shot off there, but we don't manage to do so. He breaks his flaps off, but it doesn't really matter. At this point, he's already dead. He wasted his first one or two passes. And once you get through those passes, yeah, it's kind of out of energy. It's going to be too slow. And the FU1C just, yeah, that's the same engine as the 2.71, if that tells you anything. That thing is at 4.7, and yes, the guns are great, it's pretty fast, but it takes forever to get up to that speed. And if you're going to start dogfighting someone, you're going to be out of that speed extremely quick. And the energy generation on that thing is essentially non-existent. And then we spawned a P47 above us, and I'm not entirely sure which one it is at this point. And I'm really hoping it's not a D28. I can now dogfight him, but it's going to of course depend on what he's going to be doing. He's playing it right, he's not instantly diving on me, he waited a little bit to get on my 6. And this already tells me that he is not... He at least has two synapses going on in his brain, I'm not sure how many more. But he's at the very least aware of how air combat works, so I'm not going to count him out on just completely dunking me. And then I notice it's a P47N, the end from Nico. And yeah, the second I saw that, I said, nice, right back to the hangar you go. That thing is also absolutely horrible. And if you're wondering why there isn't a video on that thing on my channel. Well, for the same reason there won't be one in the future. It is absolutely appalling. It doesn't have the good climb rate. It has the same engine as the P47M for Marco. Except just like Marco, the frame is kind of French. It simply doesn't work. It's way too heavy. And it does have that better characteristic in terms of maneuverability at high speed. The problem is it's so heavy that you can't really maintain high speed. So you're going to get this one or two passes off. And then you are going to be a complete sitting duck. Now he totally could have played it better. But at the end of the day he is not going to be doing much against the Typhoon. Especially if the Typhoon is somewhat paying attention. And unfortunately for him I somewhat was paying attention. And now there's a P29Q on the deck. And it's the French one. It is slightly different to the P29N. That's a different prop. I'm not sure how different it behaves. But in the... Typhoon, I'm not completely worried about it. The P29, the Q and the end can all out dogfight virtually every plane at the BR, but he's slightly smoking. He is not going that fast and I have a bit of a positional advantage. And on top of that, even though those planes are extremely strong in the dogfight, you do have to know what you are doing and you do have to be in a position to actually utilize your strengths. The strength of the P29 is that it can go at to extremely low speeds and abuse the flaps. It gets a pretty good turn rate. An extremely good low speed energy generation with which you can basically devastate everyone. And yes, that's exactly what you think it means. Because you can faintly hear it in the background, can't you? But after killing the P29, there is now an A6M. That's the one we set on fire at the start and of course put the fire out. 
as well as a B-25. And we go ahead on with the B-25 because I have a feeling he's going to be gun shipping. And I don't want to deal with that in the slider. So I want to take him out right now. He does hit us with one of his gunners. We actually managed to get really, really lucky. And we don't get an oil leak despite him hitting our engine cowling. So that's pretty lucky. But was it worth the risk? Kind of, kind of not. It depends on what he would have done. If he had started the gunship, it would have been worth it. Worth the risk, that is. And right now, I can't really deal with the zero. I don't have the speed. I don't have the altitude. And he's just going to be pitching up to us. And because we don't have a stellar climb rate, what we need to abuse is his top speed. The problem with that is it takes a little bit. And if you try to take this guy vertical, it's going to take a while to actually start building enough of an energy advantage. Unless he actually follows us at high speed to kill him. And the problem with that is there's still other teammates alive for them. But I actually have a teammate alive too. And I really couldn't be asked to deal with this guy. So I'm just going to double team him. I want to kill this guy quickly. I want to get him out of the way. Because a zero together with another teammate. Especially something like the F6C. Which is a P51C if you weren't aware. Is just extremely annoying. And the P51C is climbing in the background. Right now I'm going to be getting a little bit of altitude myself. And I can kill the zero on my own. But it's going to take time. And because I don't have a stellar roll rate, I don't have this ability to snap into him at higher speeds, it's probably going to take me a bit. And if I take too long and the F46C comes in, I'm going to be absolutely boned. I, I'm not even, I'm not going to do much. So I'm going to come in here together with my teammate. And I notice that the A6M turns around. So I'm actually just going to pressure him into my teammate. Because I'm expecting my teammate to just full commit this guy. To at least fight him. And if he does... He's going to be occupied, which means that we can take him down, or at least take down the F6C. We turn in, and we set him on fire for the second time in this match. The J21 actually leaves him alone, thank you for that. And now we are going to leave the area. And I know that the F6C is diving right now, and if I come back in right now, I'm going to set both of us up for failure. So I'm going to extend for a little bit, get a little bit of altitude, and the A21 here should have a little bit of time to stay alive versus the F6C. And if the F6C bleeds all his speed to kill him instantly, then he instantly dies to me as well. So no matter what happens here, the J21 will win. Whether it, we will win with his plane alive or with his plane dead, I can't tell you yet. So the F6C goes for us and I'm going to fly a little bit towards the A21. Because if the F6C then continues to turn for us, that means that I can easily kill him. I pre-lead the turn, he goes the other way. No big deal because we are in a typhoon. So we go straight up. And we're going to stall right on top of him. The A21 comes in, starts shooting at him, misses everything. No big deal either. Because I know the J21 is not really mocking him. The J21 is just extremely frustrating to fly. And it's for a good reason. It only has good guns. It's like the SO8000. Not a stellar plane, but good guns. People do well in it. Which means that the BR goes up. And then we kill the B25. That's going to ground pound instead of shooting at us. I'll completely take it. Thank you for kill number 7. And that's going to be game number one. And here is a little bit of an older game. So if you hear different gun sounds, that will be why. But it's pretty funny and it has some pretty good examples. So I decided to actually use it regardless. So we are in an energy advantage here. Advantageous position. And we can dive on both of these guys. They are relatively slow. So they shouldn't be too hard to hit. Now if they roll out of the way and they pull correctly, then I can't roll in at all. And this shows exactly that. I'm just going to roll to the right. Try to correct it. And keep going for the Focker Wolf 190A that's right ahead of us. He's shooting at an AI. He's probably not paying attention. So we are going to try to shoot him from a little bit of a longer range. We managed to get some hits in. We hit him again. And now he starts rolling around. And I have just no business trying to stay with that. So I'm going to break off. Use all the speed that I have to leave the area. And I'm just going to, well, leave the area. We go into a little bit of a climb. And we are just going to wait to see what these guys are going to be doing. I want the G55 out of the picture first. He's a lot more dangerous. But the Focke Wolf 190 is going to be a little bit harder to kill. Because he can actually roll around very well. So we climb away here. We see what they are doing. The Focke Wolf is spraying at us. And the G55 is basically stalling himself underneath us. So I'm just going to do this little bit of a spiral. And I'm just going to be right on top of him. The 190 is also way too slow. I was initially going for the G55, but the 190 is just way too slow. He's a little bit closer, so I can kill him and then continue my dive 
towards the G55, meaning that I don't really have to waste any time. I notice that he starts pitching up again, so I dodge a little bit, but he's going even slower than I anticipated, which means that he doesn't have the energy to do anything right there. And that goes guy number two. B409 F4 coming in, at least I think it is. I think it's a uh, B409 F4 drop, but we are not sure yet. But we're going 600 kilometers an hour, which is higher than his top speed, and we out turn him. So the second we get more energy, we are faster. All we have to do is just turn with him, and he can't really go anywhere. We are just gonna turn around, we're gonna dive on him again, and we are already catching him, and we haven't even completely completed our dive yet. So this guy is gonna go exactly nowhere he's gonna try to roll out of the way but he's simply too slow he can't really do anything and he rolls back into our guns i advise him to watch the defensive flying guide that i made the other day actually that's a little bit rude he can do literally nothing here it's all dependent on me messing up but this guy is so slow and i turn so much better at these speeds that even if i mess up completely i mean look at this guy he's going like 400 so no shade to him, he couldn't really do much in that position anyway. That's why you want to avoid it altogether. He comes up on 90A, not sure which one, it's an A4. All we have to do is just go up, lead him into the turn. And we just turn with him. Like we just hold one key right now and he is going to stall out in front of us. Look at this. J Black was going for him as well. But I mean, look at this difference in energy. It really doesn't matter. And now we are in a bad position. We have a B of the line F4 that's going to be diving on us pretty fast here. And if you're wondering how the first two kills of this game went, well, I forgot to record them. So I'm sorry for that. So this guy starts diving on us. And he doesn't go for us instantly, which means that we can't really cut off his loop at all. We're going too slow to really dodge him. So we pull in and then we try to pull up over and he shoots our rudder off. Unlucky. But just because I lose my rudder doesn't mean I'm just going to give you the win. We are going to keep turning with this guy. And for right now I can't loop with him because he has way more energy than us. So I'm just going to reset and then turn back around. And he goes for J Black once. And then I say I kind of want to try to kill him without a rudder. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing here. So we go for him. He's completely... Well he's not stalled out but he's going super slow. But look at this. I can barely turn into him. I managed to somewhat get in him. I miss him once, hold the key again, I'm just flopping all over the place and this is why I have keyboard controls and then just, yeah, he's not actually dead, but he's crit, it's a start, so all we have to do now is make sure that we actually finish him, we're gonna keep pulling into him here, J Black is trying to steal it, shame on you, but then the entire team comes in, but again, I'm just trying to kill this guy without a rudder and it's not really proving to be very effective, but then he pulls straight up. We managed to get a lucky lead in. And then we win the... Yeah, we don't. We get rammed by a teammate. Isn't that just fantastic? I'm not even sure why he tried to pull up. The guy was already dead. But, you know, all I have to say is, honestly, quite incredible. And there we go. That's seven kills and a ramp. And I noticed that this key 44 is pretty high. And how can I not notice? He's in low alt orbit. But I feel like I can kill this guy... And I want to kill this guy very quickly because I don't want to deal with a key 44 that's going to be climbing the entire match. Our energy difference right now is probably the lowest it's going to be. And I can, I can turn with this guy. I do have a pretty good turn rate compared to him. The thing is he just has much more of that energy generation. He has an extremely powerful engine and he can climb up there very very quickly as you saw right there. But if he starts a dogfight with us and he's going to do these very wide lines because the key 44 especially at high speed just doesn't turn that well. We are just going to end up getting a shot in. He turns out of the way but it's a little bit too late and he's a little bit too slow. And we just slap him out of the air because I don't want to deal with Japanese planes above me. And if they present themselves in a relatively risk free manner I'm going to be taking it any day of the week. I absolutely hate Japanese planes. I cannot stand fighting him. Unless of course it's a key 94, a key 87, on which we'll get a video pretty soon here actually, because someone actually managed to uh, get all his money together again to donate one. Thank you very much for the donation, but I do not understand why he would pay that kind of money to fly a shitty plane like that. But the video is almost done. All I have to do is actually record the commentary, which takes about as long as the video lasts most of the time. So we dive in, we crit the F6C and the F6C crit is not really an issue. 
I then notice that the Ki-83 is going head on with us. I start spraying at him. He starts dodging us. He doesn't want to go head on with us. Completely understandable. F-60 is in front of us. I was thinking about finishing him. But the Ki-43 would have been a little bit too close for comfort behind us. So I break off. I go back up and over. And the F-60 is stalled out. He is dead. Typhoon comes in and saves the day. Get it? Saves 88. Lamau. I'm hilarious. I know. And then I kill these two guys because they're going way too slow. We get a crit. The Typhoon actually hits us. But bad hit detection saves us the pain of getting team killed. And then the Key 43 saves us the kill by bailing out. And I'm not sorry. But I'm now done with the puns. I really am. Then we dive to the deck. And we are going to find ourselves a lonely B-25. And him having gunners is not going to save him. I get it. Save a 31. Yeah, yeah, now I'm actually done. So he's going to start shooting at us. And I'm just going to full send it. I'm doing the event. I really don't care if I die right here. Sure, it's annoying to die the gunners. Because it's like... It feels a little bit cheesy. I know bombers need the gunners to stay alive. It's just very annoying. Luckily, we don't. He only, he only hits our wingtip. He goes down. He gets his wing severed. <laughs> Get it. And then we go and look for the last guy. It's a key 67. That's role playing as an astronaut. So we pop a blind hunt. And we are just going to fly towards him. And then shoot at him. Here he is. And we're just going to turn in. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just dodging his guns. And I, as you can see. I really. I just don't care. Like I'm not here to prolong these matches for too long. Sure if I can stay alive I'm going to try but I'm not going to be going full try hard. And I know this guy's on fire. But I just have this feeling he's going to put it out. And he does of course. Of course he does. So we turn back in. It says Gunner is unconscious. He's not shooting at me. So now I'm actually just going to park it on his ass. I'm going to keep clicking on him. And eventually he's finally going to be put on fire. He now gets a little bit too close to the AA range. And that's where I draw the line. Luckily he actually burns up. And we can go straight into the next game. So we set this P-38J on fire. And that's three guys right below us. And I kind of want to dive on them. The thing is... I have a feeling this P-38 is also going to be putting the fire out. It has been happening a lot to me today. And as we say that, he actually does burn up. And now there's three guys right below us. The P-51 sees that we're coming in with a Typhoon going 600 kilometers an hour. And he decides, I'm just going to save you the trouble. I'll slam it right into the ground for you. And all I have to do now is basically just commit to this dive. I break off. I notice that the P-47 is going head on. He actually wasn't. But at the end of the day, even if you misread it, you see how easy it is to not take a head on with an energy advantage. All you have to do is just hold your ASCII or whatever you have for pitch up. And you can just kill this guy. I have so much energy over these guys that they can do absolutely nothing. So if you go head on with someone that's going twice your speed. Sure if he takes it. You are getting a very lucky 50-50. But if you are going head on with someone doing half your speed. It's a little bit of a waste. So we kill those two guys. And we simply leave the area. And we look around for the last guy. And there he is. It's the I-185. That's on the deck. He's going pretty fast. He's diving on us right now. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with him. But for now we are just going to turn around and see if I can get a head on off. So we turn around. We do want to be careful. He has three Savaks in the nose. So I don't want to stick too long. Because those hit pretty hard nowadays. And it's kind of weird to say that. So we shoot at him. We both dodge. And none of us get a connect. And we just turn around. And I'm going to try to dunk him from a little bit of a longer range. Now I don't actually get a good shot in. I miss my shots. He runs away. And after a little bit. He turns back around. And he goes for the two guys behind us. He sets the zero on fire. And I just kind of loitered in the back. And why do I do that? Because now. If he thinks about committing to the fight with the Yak 3. I can simply just pitch up for him. He's a level 100. He has some experience. But if he takes that fight. He's going to kill his energy advantage. Sure he has it versus the Yak 3. The thing is that. His energy trap is not going to work versus me. When I'm already going max speed towards him. So he can't really do much here. Because if he does take the fight with the Yak Tree. He can kill the Yak Tree here. He has much more energy. The thing is. He doesn't have enough energy to also get away from me. So I just kind of run away. I wait for him to take the fight. We come back in. And we spray him out of the air. There goes the I-185. And then for one of the last kills of the game. We have a Donye 335. And the Donye 335, not a stellar aircraft, which means that we are not going to go head on with him at all. I'm not even going to bother shooting at him. I'm just going to go to the left. He's extremely slow, so he won't pull very hard. So I'm just going to roll up and over. 
And he's already basically stalled out. I'm well, sure he isn't, but he has no business trying to pull into this at all. We are going faster, we turn better, and we just turn around and kill him. That's all I have for you today. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.